All right, so we've got a VRChat open beta active right now, and it comes with a lot of neat little updates. A few of them are for Avatars 3.0, but I don't know how any of the Avatar stuff works, so I'm skipping all of that to go down into the Udon stuff. There's a lot of things here that are mostly just quality of life adjustments, and I think that most of them are well needed, and a few of them took a bit longer to get here than honestly I was expecting. Uh, but the first one of those definitely being the first, uh, here, let me zoom in. You can now set the interaction text and proximity on Udon behaviors without switching to debug mode. So I have two Unity projects open. This is the, the new one. If I go into this one, which is the old slash current build, if we want to adjust how far someone can interact with this object, you would have to go up into inspector debug and then you would type, oh, th they can adjust, they can click it from six meters away and the text for interacting with it would be uh, click me. And as soon as you were done with that, you would go back into normal mode. But we don't need to do that anymore because, wait, this is a lie. Hold on. Okay, so it's not a lie. It just only ever shows up if you have your interact event actively going into something. And then you have the section here for interaction, which allows you to change the name, the distance uh, on a nice slider, but it also gives you the, the spot where you can put the interaction text, which let's be honest, you'll probably never use. But now that I'm looking at it, it's actually quite nice that this is hidden by default so that it's not cluttering up the UI over here. So next we have fix for multiple set variable nodes. So the issue previously is that if you had two set variable nodes in your graph for the same variable, here, let me show you. If I go into the old one, I would click this one to check it. But if I wanted to reload this, I would find out that the compiler actually just set them both to be the most recent one, which uh, kind of broke, uh, let's say three video ideas that I was working on previously. So yeah, uh, I'm glad this one's fixed and for proof. Yay, it's fixed. Wonderful. All right, back to the notes. Uh, fix for VRC URL variables not being editable. Maybe that was the case. I never ran into it, but cool. Uh, Udon graph variables will now ensure that their names are unique when you create or rename them in the variables window or when you paste them into the graph. So in the old version here, let me just pull up a new variable. We have a, a bool named new variable in here. And if I want to get a bool, it would be new variable two but I can go in and delete the two and hit enter and they just have the same name, which will more than likely break compiling. So that, that was never a good situation. But now in the current one, uh, let's say I have uh, another bool. Uh, it autofills instead to underscore one. And if I delete that, uh, it, it adjusts itself again. It, it seems to be thinking that its current name is still actively in the list, so it goes around that. Uh, like, I changed it from one and now it went to two, but it, it is of no consequence. That, that is fine. You are almost certainly renaming these variables anyway. <laughs> then we have added video error nodes so that you can actually check out what errors you got from stuff. So this was actually a, an interesting issue because previously you couldn't tell what type of an error you got from videos, uh, whether it was like, oh, the URL was bad or you ran out of internet. But the code existed, so you were actually entirely able to use this in Udon Sharp. There just wasn't a node for it in the graph. So if I pull up uh, on video error, you'll see here we got a little drag out that allows you to check different stuff. Uh, you can go through the different like error types if the error equals stuff. But in here, uh, in the old one on video error, you would drag out and it would just be empty. There, there were no nodes for handling video errors. And now that we have this, we can better adjust for, oh, this was caused by you typing in a wrong URL. And you can like give that information to someone and do things based on that adjustment. Now other Udon things. Update order can now be set for each program. So what they mean by update order is, let's say you have uh, like 30 different Udon behaviors in your scene, and they're all different Udon behaviors. 
uh, let's say one of them should run after a different one. Like their update event happens. It, it, it is ideal for this to happen at a later time than it would be for one of the others. You can now set the order at which things get set like that. So if I go into the new one, I'll click our little test variable here. We have update order zero. So if I duplicate this, uh, test one, let's set this to be one. 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 All right, it appears that setting it in the inspector uh, doesn't actually work. The only way that you can set the update order for individual Udon behaviors is going up to settings for the, the Udon behavior you have open actively. So just to show a distinction between, I'll get rid of these in this one. And okay, so it's test by itself. So test by itself, you do show update order. And if it doesn't work, you hit it again. Now update order, you can set this to be zero. So it'll happen first. I just hit enter there. And now you see it says zero over here in the inspector. If I go to this one, which I have set to two and I open that, I can change that to be one by hitting that a couple times, one. And then it adjusts over here. But yeah, if I, you, adjusting this manually in the inspector doesn't actually do anything. I will. I am assuming that this will be fixed by the time the open beta is finished. Now we have a bunch of classes that have been exposed to it on. Not all of them, but a bunch of cool ones. So we can do custom things with reflection probes, uh, occlusion portals, gradients, animation curves, culture info. I, I don't know what that is. Stopwatch. Maybe. Okay, I, I don't know what actually most of these do, but we'll, we'll figure it out eventually. All right, reduce cost of Udon behavior run program. So this just means that when it's sending an event to something, it'll be less intensive. It, it will have to think less to do the same thing, which is always good in terms of performance. Speaking of performance updates, we have Udon behavior update, late update, and fix updates running more efficiently as I have interpreted it. Uh, apparently they have Eliminate the overhead of processing these calls for Udon behaviors whose program does not exploit these events. So I guess if you're not actively using update, late update, or the likes in your script, then it will think about those less. I, I was under the impression they didn't think about them at all. Whatever. Uh, ooh, there, there's been some UI updates as well. These are the ones that I've been uh, really excited for. So if you... Pop into your thing over here. I'll just sign in. Go to your builder. Uh, all right. So down here we have Forest Non VR. That button didn't used to stay pressed, but now it does, which is really nice. Uh, one other thing is show extra options on build page and account page. These uh, also didn't used to stay pressed, so it's it's nice to have those be persistent now. Thank you, VRChat. They've made some adjustments to how MIDI drivers work. Uh, so like you can have launch information to access a specific one. I, I don't personally own a MIDI, de a MIDI device, so I can't actually test any of this, but I am assuming that this works. And as of present, they have broken adding and subtracting health damage from SDK2. I assume that will be fixed by live as well. All right. That, that's it for what I found in the current updates. Again, I have no idea how Avatars 3.0 works, so I can't even begin to understand what like the different states are. It goes through 128 memory. What? Whatever. Anyway, hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you around.